So there's a car we're gonna be stalled at axling. It's a 86 Isuzu Trooper. Um, that's a VR6 motor, don't worry about that. Um, pretty much we're gonna be using a Toyota axle in the front, possibly maybe in the back too, still not sure. Now I just wanted to record it from the side here to show the stock form before we do the axle swap. Um, still also not sure if I'm gonna do spring under or spring over. Uh, we'll see right now when uh, we do it so we know how high it's gonna be. So let's get started. All right guys, so we measured everything out. Sorry for the bad lighting. And we tack welded it on there and then rechecked all the measurements and everything's still straight. And there's a little, just a little rig I made to make it easier for the spacing. Pretty much, um, these are three inches wide. So pretty much, it's the, the Toyota Axle is 29 for the purchase on center. So I cut this to 26 and then welded it, or tack welded it on there to space it the 29 on center apart. Make it a lot easier. So on here, I just kind of put it where I need it and then I'll fully weld it on, weld the hangers on, and then I'll uh, break the tack weld off here. And then this little cross member for rigging it up will be, out of the way and then I'll just have to make some uh, little triangle supports to support the part that hangs out towards the center. The front um, shackle hangers we're gonna end up having to cut these off because they're kind of in the way pretty much from this little union here kind of this piece here to the other side to the other side here it measures 29 inches so pretty much the little shackle hanger will have to be pretty much centered on there kind of like this so that's why we had to cut it off because they were kind of interfering so let me just cut off the other side sorry for the bad lighting and we'll be in and measured rechecked everything was fine so i went ahead and fully welded them in not the prettiest welds like how we say but it's not going to go nowhere that's all that matters and i gusseted it on the inside um then on the, on the these two here, I fully welded them in already. And once again, same deal as the back. <laughs> Not the prettiest welds, but it won't go nowhere. And then uh, I'll probably, sorry for the bad lighting. Uh, let me switch sides. I'll probably uh, put like a gusset here, even though it probably doesn't really need it, but I'll do it just for safety. Then once I do that, I'll take off all the original suspension. All right guys, so now that Everything's solidly welded. Uh, we're gonna start removing the IFS. Um, I'm just gonna unbolt it and then just cut the brackets because this, on the front side, the really the only brackets it has is the bump stops here and then the shock bracket here, but I think the shock bracket unbolts. So pretty much in the front, I guess the only brackets I'll have are the bump stops and then on the back side, it has the lower control arm mount, which is back there. So I'm going to remove all that and then uh, I'll record again. Okay, so right now we're, we just got done uh, grinding off all the crap or the welds or whatever. So now uh, I made this little plate here so I can put in here and cap off that hole there. Um, it's just a quarter inch uh, flat stock that I cut to shape. So I'm gonna put it in there and weld it in real quick. There it is welded. I'm just gonna grind on the welds, make it look semi-nice, and move on to the other side. So as you can tell, I kind of forgot to record, but pretty much here it is all finished and painted. Welded the shock hoops, uh, welded the, the backing for the motor mount there, grinded it smooth so it doesn't look that bad, and put a Rancho shock on here. So pretty much there's the shock hoops already done. Everything's welded and ready to go. So for now the front is semi done. I just kind of welded this uh, pipe there to the original tie rod tube. They should probably hold at least for the trail or the, uh, I don't really go to like trails. I just kind of go, well, I don't go like mudding or crawling or whatever. I mainly just drive through trails. So just for trail use that a hold and then uh, I just have a crossover I'm going from the I think that's originally where that shock the steering stabilizer goes I've got it from there going to the um, 
to that there. Now that's just temporary. I'm gonna go upgrade to one ton arms, and then that way I'll be able to on this one, on the one ton that that there where both is a lot stronger, so it'll hold up to the abuse. And I still don't have a front drive shaft hooked up, as you can tell. And for that, I'm getting the that transfer case is shot, so I'm getting I got a whole new tranny for it, and that's getting redrilled to match the Toyota drive shaft. So for now, the front is done as you can see the pretty much we got the wheel it's it's a little bit more forward than stock i think it's just like two inches which is good for off-road or whatever you know it went and then we decided i decided to do it this way because that's pretty much the only way i would make it work to have the leaf spring bolt here and have the shock on the front normally it's flipped but i mean that's the only way i could kind of get it to work on here so that's just what i went with and also in case you're wondering what leaf springs i'm using they're pretty much the main leaf pack i guess you can say is from a two-wheel drive the rears of a two-wheel drive i think it was like a 84 85 toyota and then i used uh an extra then i pretty much that's what i had first on hand and then i, I a buddy of mine gave me another set I, I think those were four wheel drive rear leaves so i pretty much got two rears stacked together to uh to make this leaf pack and i think i'm gonna need to find another set of leaves the same for this for the driver's side because the leaf pack on the driver's side is kind of like more worn out than the leaf pack i put on the passenger side so i'll either i'll probably try to find another one and the this driver's side here was on the driver's side on the rear of the the these were pretty much both driver's sides of what they originally came off of so i'm going to try to get passenger sides maybe they'll be less worn out or i don't know maybe try to get another set of leaves to put on it but i mean toyota parts are kind of you can find them a lot so that shouldn't really be an issue now we got the ugly toyota diff out here we already took out the um the original isuzu one so i'm not, not grinding it off right here where it's going to be welded so I want to put it up here, and then I'm just going to put the pinion angle, or I'm just going to put it in line with the rear drive shaft. Um, yeah, and then, so I'm going to just put the new leaf spring perches on there, tighten it, and then that way I can still adjust the pinion angle on it. And once I see where it's going to be, and I, I'm going to just grind around it, and do the same on the other side, see where it's going to be at. And then I'll uh, tack it in place, fully weld it. And then this side, I'm still gonna need to grind off the old perch. And then uh, after I weld that on, I'll just grind the whole thing down and paint it all black. So, okay, so as you guys can see where I'm gonna weld, it's all nice and grinding smooth. So right now I'm gonna lift it up to the leaf springs, rest the perches on there, and then just kind of snug down the U-bolts. And then I'll mess with my pinion angle and try to uh, put pressure on the springs here. So I'll have a compressed compressed height, I guess, kind of, so I can see the pinion angle. So there's the rear also. It's all done already. Um, well, I still don't have the e-brake hooked up, but I mean, other than that, it's all done. I used the extended, the anti-wrap uh, leaf spring perches, and I just welded the shock stud bolt to the top of the u-bolt bracket so that's pretty much how it is stock and that way the shock is kind of the same length i didn't really need to mess with that and to bolt the uh the drive shaft to the toyota axle i just used a uh i pretty much just used the spacer and i put the toyota flange on the drive on the isuzu drive shaft because the u-joints is the same u-joint so that worked out nice and that pretty much lifted me a bit but it would still kind of sit lower in the back so i i just got the extended uh leaf spring shackles that way it lifted me to be pretty i mean it still sits a little lower in the back but it's it's kind of you know whatever it's only like an inch and i'm wearing 35s um, those are stock Toyota wheels and I just put the Isuzu hub the hub cap from the Isuzu on there on the front no cap because it didn't fit and let's see what else other than that it's pretty much stock the way I got it I think the only other thing I've done 
is just out of that light bar there just for looks um in case you're wondering about the light bar it's a i think it's a 52 inch curved one don't really remember um then these brackets here i got them off ebay they're for they're meant for a xj uh, um, a jeep cherokee xj and but i mean they work like like they're meant to be for the car so that worked out nice and i just wired up the light bar to work off the high beam switch so that's pretty much it for this car let me know if you guys maybe want to see more update videos about it in the future and i'll maybe make some more and thanks for watching.